update and pick up on something that Mr. McMahon said earlier about uh, how previous uh, cases and other circumstances regarding Ms. Brooks, her family, and others have garnered a great deal of public attention. That is true, but I want to make sure that everyone here, including Ms. Brooks and everyone who may be listening to what I have to say, understands what this case is not about today. This case is not about gossip. This case is not about supposition or surmise, and certainly not about local mythology as to what might have occurred a few years ago. This case, what it is about today, is about a defendant who is currently on probation and who has committed a subsequent offense involving the trafficking in drugs. I will be confining whatever decisions I make to what I know to be true in these particular cases. As I look at this particular case, what strikes me are, is, are two essential obvious considerations, and that is, first of all, this case occurred while Ms. Brooks is currently on probation. Uh, this case also involves her engaging with other members of her family in a criminal enterprise. Those two individuals, one of whom has been sentenced, one will be one another will be sentenced soon, uh, to me, strikes me as uh, wrong. It, it should not be the case uh, that, first of all, a mother should be engaging with her husband and her son in any criminal enterprise, let alone the sale of drugs, but that is true here. And Ms. Brooks is already on supervision to this court. So I find those factors to have some seriousness level to me over and above the normal situation. Uh, so that is of a concern to the court. And the factual scenario set forth clearly indicates her knowledge, involvement, and in fact she was directing to some degree the conduct of the parties as the transaction occurred. That to me is something more than simply being a bystander or trying to minimize her own conduct. She is directly culpable for what occurred under these circumstances. Having made those determinations, the court finds that, in my judgment, the guidance away from the imposition of a prison term has been overcome. I don't believe that Ms. Brooks, at this point in time, is an appropriate candidate for probation. I believe that she has shown herself uh, to be a person who is not likely, likely to succeed and in fact has intentionally violated the terms and conditions of her probationary term on more than one occasion. Having made that determination, the court finds that as she is no longer amenable to community control, that a prison term is necessary and consistent with the purposes and principles of sentencing. In my judgment, based upon the facts and circumstances as I have outlined, the court would order that she serve a prison sentence of 10 months at the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction. I granted her an opportunity to participate in probation. Uh, she did so for a period of time. I would consider her performance on probation less than stellar, certainly not the worst that I've ever seen, but certainly not the best, not the product of someone who's really working hard to rehabilitate herself. By virtue of her decision to engage in trafficking in drugs while on probation, I believe that I'm obligated to find now, and it's utilizing the same principles and the same discussion as I mentioned before, that I must impose a prison sentence now. I find that she is no longer amenable on her probationary case as well. This court had ordered previously that a 30-month prison sentence be reserved. I would find it it's appropriate that that full 30-month prison sentence be imposed at this time in order that she serve the 30-month prison sentence that I had reserved in her case by virtue of a sentencing entry filed uh, back on November 14, 2011 from a sentencing hearing which occurred on October 26, 2011. And as I've imposed sentence in the 2011 case, she'll be taken into custody to serve that sentence. I believe I've covered the issues necessary for some of the law. Anything else you'd like me to cover? No, thank you. Mr. McMahon, do you have any, any matters for the court's consideration? Not at this time. All right, very well. These proceedings are concluded. Ms. Brooks will be taken into custody. As I asked the officer, would you 